I thought jujitsu was gay. I was like, I don't know if you guys have met <laughs> Many still do, mate. We don't know how to yeah, get That's the only reason I do it, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, like, I was like, this this looks ridiculous. This seems so stupid. Mm. Just so, the freaking, the collar chokes. More than anything, it's like, I knew about the other chokes, you know, rear naked chokes, Darces, guillotines and stuff, just because I watched them in May too. But the collar chokes, like I got put to sleep with a clock choke on like my first day. And I was just like, this is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Teachers of jiu-jitsu often sell jiu-jitsu as self-defense. I don't think s that is an appropriate thing to say when I've been to jiu-jitsu gyms that never do takedowns whatsoever. The, the big issue is that lots of the best guys will go their whole career and not understand how to wrestle ever. There's a lack of setups and a lack of hand fighting. Um, obviously, I always preach it, right? Uh, it's very easy to drill a double while we're both standing still. So like at its simplest form, hand fighting essentially is one person is searching for inside position and they want inside position in order to achieve any sort of takedown. Owen Lively, that's one, that's a big one. I like the guy, he's super cool. I think we could have a good scrap. I think it would be a fun style matchup. I think Nicky Rod is an obvious one. That would be a great match too. And then uh, there's a guy named like Elder Cruz. Welcome back to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel for our weekly episodes. Today's guest is a three-time national US wrestling champion, professional grappler, Brandon Reed. Brandon, welcome to the Everyday Perspective podcast. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good, mate. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and joining us. Um, it's, uh, it's great to, to chat to people across the pond and get a different perspective on things. Um, one of the first things that we wanted to touch on straight away is obviously the fact you're a three-time national wrestling champion in the US. Um, in the UK, we don't kind of wrestle through high school. We don't have much of a pedigree in the UK. It's quite a niche thing over here. And mm -hmm. through you know watching things like MMA and, and UFC and, and Jiu-Jitsu, we hear terms like NCAA and Division One. And we nod and, and agree, and it sounds great, but we don't actually really know what that means. So I was wondering, mate, if you could just firstly explain to us, I guess, how wrestling is structured in the US and what some of those terms mean. Would that be okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, it, it's quite a complex thing because uh, there are five or six different divisions in college wrestling. So I wrestled in the NAI. There's NAI, D1, D2, D3, JUCO, and like Cali Juco. So there's, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. I, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm a wrestler, so I couldn't count very well. But uh, <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, for the most part, Division One is the, the top of the top in wrestling as far as what we call All Americans. So an All American, if you don't know, is the people who become top eight in the country at the very end of the year at the national tournament. So all of those divisions have eight All-Americans. So, yeah. So, But in Division One, the, the All-Americans tend to be the best of the best. So I, di I didn't wrestle Division One. I wrestled NAI. Um, but regardless of the division you wrestle, they're all pretty good. Uh, I think in the U.S., uh, unlike over across the pond, like you said, <laughs> it's there's there's so many damn wrestlers that like they they have to separate by division or it would just it would be impossible to have like one college wrestling season. So, uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess that's the, the easiest way to explain it. I mean, there's probably hundreds of thousands of wrestlers here, so they had to split it up into different divisions and then division one just by chance ended up becoming like the best, the most well-known one. So when people say like wrestling NCAA D1 wrestler and BJJ, that's, uh, I guess that's where like the idea comes from. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Okay. And, and obviously, um, I think you guys, it seems like at school, your, your sport programs uh, seem great and lots of opportunities to you know, kind of go through school doing various sports. So were you into sort of wrestling at a very young age or did you pick it up later in life? Uh, I started wrestling when I was 13 years old. So I guess it's, I don't know if that's young. I don't know uh, the sports culture over there, but like many of the better wrestlers here started when they were like four or five years old. Mm. Uh, I was doing soccer. I was a goalie when I was super young. And then, uh, or I guess you guys call it football. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's why I laughed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's football. Yeah, but uh, I didn't like that. I didn't enjoy it. So I quit. And then I tried to play American football 
didn't really get much traction doing that. And then I got lucky and ran into a wrestling coach when I was 13 and uh, I started it there. But yeah, most guys who end up wrestling in college uh, have like a similar story to me. They basically wrestled it from like the ages of five to like 13 all the way through college. I don't think you're going to find many people who didn't, I don't think you're going to find many people who started late who actually compete at like a quote unquote, like high level. There, there, there's probably a few exceptions, but there's not many. Yeah. Well, the, the only other wrestler that we've really spoken to was a, a British chap called Mike Rundy. Okay. Um, he fought in the UFC, uh, you know, a, a bunch of times. So, you know, and he, and he's, he's from the North of England. I mean, they've got a bit more of a wrestling pedigree there, but again, it's not something you do at school. So it's typically something that you would do outside of school. Um, and it's quite a niche thing. So he was quite fortunate that the part of the country he was from, there were wrestling schools mm-hmm. and he did get into it quite a young age. I think his dad's had done it as a youngster and now his son also does it from quite a young age as well. But, but yeah, I mean, typically speaking in the UK, I think if you were going to do any, any martial art or combat sport from a young age, it is well, probably when we were growing up, it was maybe boxing. Um, and if it was a grappling art, it was almost always judo. I didn't even really know what wrestling was until I watched it on South Park. Yeah. It's wrestling. <laughs> they wrestle. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? a horrible example. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, that's the first time I, I realized like there was actually wrestling, if that makes sense, like that type of wrestling. And, and I think, again, and I'm sure you get this in the States, maybe less so, but in the UK, I think people think of wrestling and they think of WWE. Oh, um, for and sure. They think of pro- professional wrestling. And it's only maybe if they've watched the Olympics that you might have seen actually freestyle and Greco wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so tell us a little bit more about the style of wrestling that you do, mate. Is it is it freestyle? Is it Greco? What do you do? Yeah, so in the United States, well, just like the U.S. likes to do, we're a little bit different than all the other countries. Um, I don't know why. It's, so we do this thing called folk style wrestling, which has this top and bottom position that you don't see in folks or in, that you don't see in freestyle or Greco. Um, also, most of us like. My, throughout my whole career, I did freestyle, Greco, and folk style. But as far as uh, collegiate style, we do folk style wrestling, which, again, I could be wrong. Uh, we're the only country, or at least we're the only major country that does it. I really don't know why we do it, but we do it. And uh, it's a definitely a controversial subject in the U.S. right now. Uh, but basically, the only difference between freestyle and folk style is the top and bottom rules. If you guys don't know, top means I'm on top, I'm riding, I'm trying to turn you, I'm trying to pin you to your back. Bottom position means if I'm in bottom turtle, for example, I'm trying to stand up and escape to get points. Uh, Whereas in freestyle, there's only takedowns and uh, quick turns, meaning if I take you down, I have like five seconds to turn you. Uh, So those are the two major differences. And then Greco is obviously you only do upper body takedowns like body locks, you know, underhook stuff and slide bys, et cetera. Uh, but the style that I definitely specialize in is folk style with the top and bottom game. So it's, it's positional. So one of you will always start on the bottom, one will start on the top and then you swap. Yeah. Well, it depends on the periods. So like there's three periods. The first period, we both start neutral. If I take you down, that means you're on bottom. Now you have to escape or I have to pin you. The second period goes, the ref will flip a coin and then depending on, you know, whose heads, whose tails, the the winner of the coin flip would decide, do they want to be in neutral? Do they want to be in top or do they want to be in bottom? So, and then if you escape bottom, that's one point. If you pin them on top, you win the match. And then if you make it to the third period, uh, the opposing member, the guy who didn't choose in the second period will then choose if he wants to be on top, bottom or neutral. So it's a bit complicated. I, I really hate it, to be honest. I, I hate that we are different than the rest of the the rest of the world. I think every I think most wrestlers will say it should be freestyle. Like it should be 100 percent freestyle just because of the Olympics. Um, but you got to play by the rules. You know? But I guess it gets you gets you good at those positions, doesn't it? You know, that's it, maybe one advantage where you, you know, if you're on bottom getting up. Is, is fucking hard at times, you know, and or even pinning someone is, is hard. So, you know, it might have its advantages in that way. Yeah, you're you're right. It, I felt that in jujitsu has helped me out a lot, to be honest. That's what so, I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I take it all back. That was a horror. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I, – I still, I still like my take, but I do agree that 
for transitioning into Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the ability to ride someone who's powerful and keep them on the mat is great. And the ability to like stand up and look for reversals is also a, a great thing, uh, especially once you start to understand the nuances of submissions uh, and how they play a role in how you defend and how you offend. So, yeah, for BJJ and MMA, I would say, yeah, you're, you're completely right. Just as far as the Olympics go, yeah, it kind of uh, – I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I feel like it, it's it's weird that we have to go from like our amateur level, right? College is like amateur to like our pro level is the Olympics, and you have to completely change sports basically in in one way or another. Um, yeah, think, it's all in it, really. Yeah, I think that can make it really difficult. Yeah. So then you obviously transitioned to jujitsu. Yeah. Um, so I guess, were you aware of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu while you were wrestling as a thing? Or was it something you came across later on and, and moved across? How did that happen? How did yeah, I w- yeah I w- so I was aware. So uh, I, I was adopted. And uh, the guy that adopted me, uh, it was funny enough, I got adopted like later in life, like in high school. And the guy that adopted me was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. And so... I thought jujitsu was gay. I was like, I don't know if you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> Many still do, mate. We don't know what it yeah, That's the only reason I do it, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like this, this looks ridiculous. This seems so stupid. So I just ignored it. So while I was in college, like high school, I ignored it. When I was in college, I was ignoring it. I was like, that's stupid. I'll never, you know, bump that. Um, even though my like dad did it and he did it very well. But what happened was it was my last year of college wrestling and it was the summer. So for many guys, we, you'll stay at the university during the summer to do team workouts and stuff. Not everyone, but many of us. And one day I was really bored and I came across like the Nicky Rod Black Belt Slayer documentary. And I was just like, oh shit, like this guy got really good at jujitsu really fast. And he was a wrestler and, you know, he was a very like average wrestler I think I can do that too. Obviously, it, became, it was a lot harder than I realized. But uh, I was like, I'm going to do jiu-jitsu after, after I'm done wrestling. And then so immediately after my college rest, my final college wrestling season happened, uh, a week later, I started doing jiu-jitsu um, only in the gi for a while. And then eventually I, tra- I moved and got to a school that had more no gi. Mm. And, and just um, the, the key difference is between obviously wrestling and jiu-jitsu – um, I mean, one of the things that I've always wondered is: there, are there submissions in wrestling, or is it is it just pinning and, and takedowns? Yeah, pinning, takedowns, escapes, and turns. So, like a turn is like where you almost pin them, but you only get like one shoulder to the mat, so you get points for it. But uh, no submissions. You can tap though; it, it happens sometimes. Where like if you tap, they still can stop the match, but uh, you're not supposed to submit your opponents. Yeah. Okay. So, so I guess that was the the, the key difference for you then is were well, the submissions, yeah. um, and then I guess training in the gi that was a bold move, mate. So fair play. <laughs> yeah. um, I think yeah. I think many many wrestlers like like Nicky Rod would probably just stick to the no gi. How did you yeah. find like wearing the gi and the grips and everything else? Uh, yeah. Initially, I hated it, of course, because it's it's like you said in wrestling, we're taught to be offensive at all times. You should always be moving forward. You should be hand fighting hard. You should be going in. You should be attempting attacks. But in the gi, you can't do that. You can't constantly move forward because you're going to get swept because a 45-year-old man is going to control your lapel and he's going to sweep you and then submit you if you're if you're pushing in way, way too hard and way too fast. So it's uh, it was learning that I needed to slow down. I needed to focus on like the small things. Like the biggest transition was – learning how to fight like grips in the gi, right? Like, okay, I need to clear the grips before I start to look for these crazy passes. Whereas like with no gi, I'm glad I started with gi first because in no gi, you really can get away with so much athleticism. Where in the gi, if you're going against someone who's much more experienced than you, you really can't get away with much uh, just being athletic. Uh, So I think it was learning how to slow down and realize I don't need to score in the first 30 seconds. Whereas in a wrestling match, it's like, if you're not looking to score in the first 30 seconds, the ref's going to put his hand up like this and say you're stalling. So uh, that that was the biggest difference. And then obviously just the freaking – the collar chokes more than anything. It's like I knew about the other chokes, you know, rear naked chokes, Darces, guillotines and stuff just because I watched MMA too. But the collar chokes, 
like I got put to sleep with a clock choke on like my first day and I was just like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, the gi was interesting. I'm, I'm glad I started it. I actually, I don't do it as much anymore just because I've transitioned to where I'm basically competing professionally. So I'm constantly, uh, training no gi now, but my first like year was almost exclusively gi with a couple no gi sessions like here and there. Yeah, mate, that's, that's fair play, mate, because, um, I mean, I, I got exposed to jiu-jitsu probably in 2007, many years ago. And, and again, in the in the UK, it was, it was you know, it was cage fighting, you know, mm. at best. It was it was very, you know, bit of this, bit of that. And I didn't put a gi on for about two years, and I was exactly the same. When I did, I the, the, the grips drove me mad. Mm. Um, Danny's been training now in jiu-jitsu for about a year and a half. Nice. And he's pretty much ditched the gi already at this point because he just <laughs> prefers the pace of the no gi and, and not having to worry about those grips. The scraps. Yeah, I just, I just prefer it. I just prefer the movement. I just prefer, again, not being fucking held for t- a minute in a stupid position. It sucks sometimes, man. Yeah, just, I just, I just you, hate it, man. You try to do a knee cut and they're just holding on to yeah. your lapel and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, like, I've been here for two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree. No, it definitely slows it down. It's good for old men like me, mate, but maybe mm. not uh, younger specimens like yourself. Yeah. And uh, were you were you brave enough to train off your back a fair bit? How did that feel? Yeah. So like almost exclusively, it was funny because I'm a wrestler. You know, there's always like the stereotypes because honestly, wrestlers and judokas tend to perpetuate this stereotype that we don't like to play off our backs. So I went out of my way in like my second or third jiu-jitsu tournament to just pull guard and i had like seven matches and i submitted everybody off of my back and it's uh i have a competition coming up again like a, just a little local one before the adcc open and i'm going to do the same thing uh, i love playing off my back every single day I, i'm playing off my back i it sounds stupid but like i'm a reverse de la Hiva guy I, I i love leg locks i love shoulder crunches i love butterfly i just got lucky that the school that i'm at with uh, chewy is very My coach was a wrestler. He was an MMA fighter too. And he also is a guy who's, you know, really about like, you know, understanding the best way to grow is to practice our weaknesses. So for three years, I've really been practicing like my weakness. And now I don't, I really don't think it's much of a weakness anymore. Obviously there's dudes who are just going to smash me, whether I'm playing on top or bottom, because that's just how jujitsu is. But I feel I can... I feel that my submissions are just as dangerous off my back now as they are if I'm on top passing. Um, if not more dangerous, honestly, I feel like I may even have more options. But yeah, yeah. I, initially it was definitely awkward. It was it was super awkward. Uh, but I love it now. I, I really do love it. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. And, and, and what did you say it was three years ago that you made the transition to jiu-jitsu? Yeah, yeah three years ago. A little over three years now. Yeah. Okay. And are you, are you purple belt now, I think? Is that right? Yeah, purple belt. Shitty yeah, purple sweet. belt. And what um what 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 weight bracket are you? What do you compete at? Ninety nine kilogram, ninety nine plus kilos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The big boys. So the big boys. The big boys. I should compete minus ninety nine. Everyone tells me because I'm like two. I I I I float around uh, two hundred and thirty pounds and two hundred and forty pounds, like somewhere between there. And minus ninety nine is like two twenty ish, mm, I believe. Two twenty. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, so I could compete at the minus 99, but to be honest, I just, uh, I don't like to cut weight. I like to eat food, drink <laughs> beer and have fun. So it's, I don't know, maybe I, I'm not disciplined enough to go to minus 99. Who, who knows? I don't know, mate. Still a lot of time. Maybe 25 in you. Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah. Did you, did you used to cut quite a lot when you were wrestling? No, I got lucky. Uh, again, it, so the weight classes in college wrestling are, they're so stupid. They're so the, there's the two weight classes that I had the option to be in were 197, 197 pounds. So anything 197 pounds or below or 200 to 285 pounds. So it, <laughs> that's a crazy gap, right? So oh, yeah. my choice was I did. So there was no 220. I, I had to either wrestle. I either had to cut to 197 pounds from 240 pounds or just wrestle with like the 285 pounders. So I said, fuck that. I'm wrestling with the 285 pounders. <laughs> and it, it was hard because most people think it's going to be easy because like they're bigger and slower. Fuck, dude. Everyone is super strong. Everyone has great hips. So it's like 
no matter how fast you are, if you don't set your takedowns up perfectly and you don't make people tired, you're, you're never going to take down a good 285 pounder if, if they know what they're doing. So that was definitely growing pains because in high school, I was wrestling 220. And in college, I basically bumped up to where I was wrestling guys like 60 pounds heavier than me. Um, but growing pains for sure. Yeah, man. But, Fuck that. But I guess that must feel nice now in jiu-jitsu where you've got, I guess, more options with the rate brackets and you're competing against people your own size now though, right? Must feel yeah. fucking, must feel yeah. light. Yeah. Dude, every now and then it's, it's crazy because even at plus 99, I, I agree with you. There's not very many people who are super fat, like, or at least when I compete at these bigger tournaments, like ADCC trials, even though plus 99 is like quote unquote unlimited, most people that I've competed against are 230, 240, 250. Yeah, like, they're just, they're just muscular. They're just yeah, big boys, they're mu- aren't they? Yeah. Exactly, which I would rather go against uh, like a muscular bodybuilder looking dude than the fucking 290 pound college football player that tend to be in college. Um, so it's nice. Uh, uh, the, the steroids is the bad thing in jujitsu, but like the 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 size is at least a good thing. Yeah, I bet. And it's funny we had a we had a conversation recently with a with a sort of nutritionist who's based in the UK who works a lot with jujitsu athletes, and we talked a fair bit about steroids. Um, is is that is that prevalent in in college wrestling as well, or is it? Do you not tend to see it so much? You don't see it too much. The okay. reason is because you get tested. So I couldn't. I don't know who the athletic commission hires. I know it's the NCAA through all divisions. The NCAA has like a drug testing, ram, randomized drug testing. So I can't speak for all everyone else, but like for me, uh, every year that I won nationals, I got drug tested. So I don't know. I can't say that for everyone. Obviously, I can. I can only speak from my experience. But if you if you pop for something, you're you're, they'll they'll take away your titles just the same as like with the Olympics, whereas like in jujitsu it's like I know, I know people will say man steroids don't make that much of a difference because if your jujitsu is good blah 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 and I'm just like ah okay, okay buddy. yeah I, th- I think the argument that we've always had is is it, it, I mean it, it does fucking make a difference but also mm-hmm. the ability to train more and recover yeah. more. Yeah. It's going to make the difference with technique. So you develop that technique as a result of being able to train at a higher frequency, a higher volume. So it definitely plays a huge role, I think, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so coming from a wrestling background then, um, coming into jiu-jitsu, <clears throat> and I know you uh, you mentioned you obviously trained with Chewy, who was got a wrestling background. But mm. again, like, like you mentioned about um, judokas joking about wrestlers not you know, working off their back. Mm-hmm. There's definitely a similar thing, I think, with jujitsu guys pulling guard and bum scooting, right? So, yeah. So, how did you find when you came into to jujitsu from wrestling? You know, what did you, you know, how did you feel about the effectiveness of the takedowns in jujitsu? Mm. There's like, there's a lot in that question because obviously now, like a, a more mature Brandon is like, okay, I understand the strategic value of pulling guard against a much better wrestler or much better judoka. I I understand it. Now, where I get a little bit frustrated with jiu-jitsu as a a niche, especially as far as like social media goes, is jiu-jitsu and teachers of jiu-jitsu often sell jiu-jitsu as self-defense. I don't think that is an appropriate thing to say when I've been to jiu-jitsu gyms that never do takedowns whatsoever, but they also have and their benefits on their wall, self-defense. Again, I'm trying to be polite. So I'm just saying. You don't have to be mate, honestly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I, I I think the, the culture is a bit weird in that way. Now, if jujitsu just said, okay, this is just sports jujitsu. Okay. Pulling guard only is totally fine. Uh, but a lot of jujitsu schools, and a lot of jujitsu teachers, they will sell jujitsu as this is the greatest form of self defense, uh, which I agree it is. If you have, if you're constantly practicing takedowns, uh, if not, I think you you can be neglecting something that is extremely helpful. If you're like in a like a real life scenario where no one's shooting you or stabbing you, um, so I, I've definitely found it odd. I also think I find it odd like uh, how scared people are to wrestle, like. For some reason, and 
people associate wrestling with injuries, whereas most wrestlers will go throughout their whole career without having any type of devastating injury. And I, I personally, I don't understand like where the injury then came from. Personally, I think it's more of like a cop out because wrestling is exhausting. And so I think people are associating exhaustion with injury, but just like with anything, if you do an arm bar with good form, you're not going to hurt your partner. If you do a double leg with good form, you're not going to hurt your partner or yourself. Uh, so I think the mindset around wrestling in jujitsu is, is extremely weak. And, uh, yeah, I think the, the guard pulling culture is fine if we're talking like pure sports jujitsu, but I also think it's very BS and ironic that jujitsu academies often try to sell jujitsu as self-defense, but the instructor can't even do a simple double leg. So hopefully that's a good, good answer. Yeah, no, I was curious, mate. And I, and I don't disagree to be fair. And yeah. I think, as I mentioned, my my, my introduction to, to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was through uh, a, more of an MMA or old school cage fighting route. So we wrestled, not very well, but we we wrestled. And but you did it. That's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. So so even now in the gi, when I've competed, I haven't for a while, but when I have done previously, I've even been known to shoot double legs, uh, mm. you know, power doubles and, and that type of thing in the gi because mm. I, I just this is my go-to. But I do agree that there does seem to be a reluctance from people to to wrestle, and I. And I wonder whether that is because there isn't, again, certainly in the UK and maybe some some jujitsu schools, there isn't the pedigree mm. of, of good technique. And you just kind of touched on it a second ago where, A, it's exhausting. And, and I, again, I completely agree. I've always said that I felt that the, the hardest bit of MMA was the wrestling. Um, super tough. And people get injured when they're tired. They make poor decisions when they're tired. And I think also if someone doesn't have good technique and they, they go in for a sloppy shot and they just crash into the mat on their knee, they're going to they're gonna blow a PCL or something. So I think it's maybe a combination of those things. And it just takes one occasion where you, I don't know, hit someone's hips pretty hard and you're half-assed and it, it, knocks, it knocks the senses out of you a little bit. It's enough to put you off, isn't it? How have you found wrestling, mate, since you've come in? So I enjoy wrestling, but my biggest issue with wrestling is that mm. I don't know enough about it. So... I can, I can do a single leg, snap down single leg, you know, or, or little bits and pieces, but to I don't feel confident in it. You know what I mean? So I, I was told as well to learn to play off my back a lot. So I, I've, I've, again, I'll, I'll pull guard, I'll just play off my back and I've got quite effective at doing that. But yeah, it's not like I'm, I'm like, I'm not worried about wrestling with someone. I just don't know enough about it. And it feels to me like it's a, it's a whole other thing. And I think on my journey, I think when I get a better at jujitsu, I think then I'll focus on on takedowns and stuff like that. I could do a few, but like, you know, like it takes years, <laughs> clearly. Do you know what I mean? To get good at wrestling and then having a having a uh, having a wrestling coach. Like you said, like we got a jujitsu coach, we got a really good one, but we haven't got a have we got a wrestling coach? No, not really. No, and, and, and again, you know, I think our jiu-jitsu coach can wrestle a bit, but he's not a wrestler. You know, he's mm. a jiu-jitsu guy. And and that's the thing. And, and also you mentioned about the self-defense thing. And again, we've had a number of conversations on this podcast where we've talked about that. And, and again, I agree where, you know, jiu-jitsu is a, is a self-defense art. It is great providing you can get your hands on somebody and get them to the floor to apply it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I find it quite effective again because I've done MMA, so I can box and keep my hands up and everything else. But mm -hmm. yeah, for those who can, if you can get a guy down, it's it's it, you see it in MMA all the time, don't you? Where you have a the old classic match of a striker versus a grappler. The grappler mm -hmm. can get it to the ground and he gets beat the shit out. So yeah, that's all the good. Cron Gracie, Cron Gracie at UFC. Yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah, man, yeah. That's the uh, that's the worst example. I I I kind of wonder how that even happens like that 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 example specifically like cron gracie how do you get that far you're an adcc champion and you've won a couple mma fight how do you get that far without the ability to close distance and even get in on a takedown i i don't understand because i i agree with you danny right it, yeah i think i think it is important to do what you said is yeah just focus on your jiu-jitsu for a bit and then once you feel confident with that, I think I agree. Maybe start to throw in some wrestling here and there. You don't have to be perfect at it. But the the big issue is that lots of the best guys will go their whole career and not understand how to wrestle ever. Versus like there are the exceptions. Like uh, Gordon Ryan is amazing at wrestling. I, I went and I, I trained with them for a week. The whole team, they all know how to wrestle very, very well. Now, if they're in a college wrestling match, are they going to beat a college wrestler? Probably not. 
but like in a jujitsu sense, they know how to wrestle. Like they, they're, they're great at it, but they're like the 1%. And I feel like the other 99% of like the high level guys, uh, they're not the greatest. Uh, obviously again, there's exceptions. There's Owen Livesley. There's like Nikki Rod. There's other guys. Uh, but it's not the majority of people. And I, I, I find that, that interesting, you know, I don't know a good word for it, but interesting is it. Are you looking to like exploit that basically then <laughs> with yeah. AC- ADCC so that yeah, you yeah. get people standing up? Because it must be such an advantage for you. I'm always like a little bit jealous that you learn that at school. You know, now I yeah. do jujitsu obviously a lot later in life, but yeah, you know, it would have been so cool to do wrestling. I would have loved to do wrestling in school, yeah. wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? You say it was, that. It cool. Wait. I would. You, I know. You I say that until you have to run stairs with fucking doors closed and like a steam in the room and you're running for an hour. I hated it. <laughs> oh, it's not I that bad, it. is it? I would, I would never go back. Like when people say, would you do that again? No, I would never. Uh, the, it was so hard. Like the so th- this is where I hate wrestling is the, the fucking conditioning. Like it is so hard. The wrestling part itself is easy, but like the culture of like getting in shape for wrestling is it's the worst thing in the world. And I I never want to do it again. It, it was. So <laughs> do you know bad. what though? It's it's crazy, isn't it? Because jujitsu and wrestling are very close, and obviously they're grappling. Mm-hmm. But jujitsu guys generally do no conditioning for jujitsu. I you know, know, you speak it, to a lot of jujitsu guys. They turn up to jujitsu, but they never, they never get in the gym. They never do any conditioning. Imagine if you, you turn up to jujitsu and he was like, "Right, today we're gonna, we're gonna run stairs." They'd be like, yeah. "Fuck off!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, "No, I'm not." Do you yeah. know what I mean? Flat out, which I always find weird because most sports people will train in the gym to get good at their sport. You look at jujitsu. A, l- a lot of people just don't fucking do that, do they? Yeah, I think it's it's just the obsession with the skill acquisition. Though there's so much to to cover, isn't there? And, and it's never ending. And I think people just have to get obsessed with that, and that's it. Mm, I agree. Going back to the takedowns, then, mate. So, so I guess we, we've kind of covered it in, in in part there. But when you look at jujitsu practitioners, and obviously you mentioned there's a, a small percentage that wrestle well, but typically speaking, like in your in your gym and, and you know sort of our local regional competitions. What would you say like the common mistakes that jiu-jitsu players make when they do try and wrestle? What do you what do you see? Where could people make small adjustments to 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 improve? Man, I think lots of jujitsu practitioners, and again, not to their own not it's not their fault, but there's a lack of setups and a lack of hand fighting. Um, obviously I always preach it, right? Uh, it's very easy to drill a double while we're both standing still i think that is important you have to do that right like you have to be like man a is gonna go for two reps i'm gonna go for two reps you need to do that constantly but you also need to start adding in like drills like i call it like the the two 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 drill the hand fighting drill like a fake snap drill like you have to learn how to like control your opponent get inside position force reactions um because then that's when the takedowns become really easy uh and again it's a it's kind of a coaching issue where like lots of coaches don't understand what hand fighting is. And the coaches who do are very, very rare. I think everyone knows how to teach a double leg, right? Boom, pop the elbow, shoot a double leg. It's very simple. Um, But once you learn the double leg, you need to learn how to hit it effectively like a highest at the, at the higher levels. Uh, Nicholas Marigali, I think that guy's hilarious. He posted a really good video the other day of him hand, like showing his little hand fighting drill. I was like, yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. And then he gets into a double. And then he that's what he did when he just competed against Felipe Pena. He gassed him out with hand fighting, and then he got to his shots, and he did that that foot trip from the single leg. Uh, I think takedowns don't have to be complicated. Like, takedowns are nowhere near as complicated as jiu-jitsu. Like, wrestling is not as complicated as jiu-jitsu. It's, it's not. It's simple, but it's, it, it's tough to teach hand fighting because, just like we said earlier, if you put hand fighting into every class – no one's going to want to show up because they're going to be like, fuck this. This is exhausting. This sucks. Um, and so the worst habit I see for jujitsu competitors when they compete and in, in my gym, because I'm the wrestling coach here, is there's a lack of knowledge in the area of hand fighting. But yeah, f- for the most part, that that's the big thing. And then obviously we talked about there's fear of hurting your knees or hurting your back. Those are two big things. And uh I don't know. For that, I don't know how to fix that. I, I think mate, you got to go see a fucking sports psychologist or something. That, that's not for me. Like, just yeah. So there's the fear, and then there's the hand fighting. Those are those are two big mistakes I see. I think I think as well. Like the big thing I, I see a lot of people is like 
the actual fear of of throwing themselves into the double leg. Do you know, you know what I mean? The actual like momentum to actually go. Yeah, I'm gonna hundred percent go for this takedown. Yeah, but I think but I think a lot of that that also comes from the hand fighting and and lack of entries as well because. You know, someone's going to have their hands low. They're going to have their hips back. You know, you, you feel like a million miles away, yeah. and they, they can't they can't get the entry. And I think that's why they're reluctant. Although they'll, they'll try a couple for miles away and get it stuffed, or they'll just fall flat on their face. Hold on, yeah, and and it puts them off. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the hand fighting? Because for anybody who's maybe just straight jujitsu guy, or maybe some of our audience aren't even grapplers, but you know, you just said that hand fighting is exhausting. You know, that some people may be talk, think you're talking about a thumb war or something. So can no. you explain like the, the systematic approach that you take to hand fighting and why it's so tiring? Yeah, for sure. So like at its simplest form, hand fighting essentially is one person is searching for inside position and they want inside position in order to achieve any sort of takedown. Now, how do you get there? A lot of hand fighting is going to be pushes on the body pulls on the body and fakes to like the lower or upper body. Once you get better at hand fighting, you start to combine things. For example, you'll do Russian ties. You'll do double snaps, double post. You can fake a high crotch. You can fake a single. You can start to use foot sweeps. I know foot sweeps, this is foot in hand, but it's just hand fighting is searching for inside position, constantly pushing and pulling, forcing your partner to react. And at the same time, you're exhausting them. Um, this all leads to like the end goal, which is taking your partner down with the lowest effort possible. Like we said earlier, if you don't hand fight, it means you're just shooting from the outside. You can score on people doing that. Jordan Burroughs is very famous for it, but for the average person who's not like a super athlete, it's going to be more likely that you run into scrambles or even more likely that you run into someone who stuffs your shot with good hips if you don't hand fight. So for me, my goal is to do all the things I said earlier, hand fight hard, exhaust my opponent over a little bit of time. And then once I'm ready to hit a clean takedown, I get the, I I wait for that perfect reaction. I don't wait for it. I create the perfect reaction. And then when I get in on that shot, it's basically effortless. Um, And I love hand fighting. I preach it the most. You can know two takedowns. You can know a double leg and you can know a single leg. And that's all you need to be a national champion as long as you have like good hand fighting on top of like good conditioning and, you know, good diet, et cetera, et cetera. But as far as technical areas, you don't need as many takedowns as you'd think. You need good hand fighting. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good explanation. Yeah, it's good, yeah. And you might have just answered the question there, mate, but I was going to ask what your go-to takedowns typically are. Um, as, uh, maybe more so for jujitsu now. Okay, is, yeah. Is it, is it what you just said or is it something different? Yeah, it's funny. It's what I just said. So I... Uh, I do love, so when I'm teaching like newer, let's say white belt, if I'm teaching like a white belt that here, we're going to do this takedown, depending on their age and their comfort level, like if they're older, like 50, 51, 52, because we have a couple guys that are gym, we're probably not going to shoot double legs. So we're probably going to focus more on like my underhook series where like we're doing underhooks, we're doing front headlocks, we're doing knee knee taps, we're doing uh, snatch singles. And so for like older guys, I'll do that. But like, let's say you're like 40 and below, like you're fine. Like you're not super old. We'll go back to our double legs and single legs because they're, I love my underhook series. I love the knee tap. I love all that stuff, but it's lower percentage than a double leg or a single leg. Um, so right now, cause I'm preparing, preparing for a comp like twice a week, I do like a pretty hard wrestling drill session with some of the guys and all we're practicing right now is double legs, like just basic Hand fight, hand fight, post double. Um, Just because if you get two hands on their legs and you get them going cross side, they can try to grab your neck, but they're not, you can't finish a guillotine if I put you cross side, right? So I think it's one of the best takedowns for jujitsu because once you have good form, you get guys cross side, you also have like a clean takedown and ADCC rule sets, which means you get, you're going to get, I think it's six points for the takedown uh, versus two. So I think the double leg, if you want to compete, is one of the better ones. If you're older, I think it's better to focus on upper body takedowns and foot sweeps. Sadly, I'm not a good guy to talk to about foot sweeps. Uh, Owen Livesley, that's one of my favorite guys to watch for that stuff. I would we, say we've had him on the podcast already. Yeah, he was on a yeah. few episodes ago. Yeah, I listened to it. I listened to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. He's the man. I think that guy's fucking dope. And 
but yeah, you watch judokas if you want to learn foot sweeps. But for older people, foot sweeps and upper body ties. For like younger competitors, I would say double legs, single legs. But obviously, uh, like I always say, there's so much nuance to what's the best takedown for jujitsu. I think what's the best takedown for jujitsu relative to your goals is a, a better way to uh, frame it. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's good, mate. And yeah, I think. I think you see a lot of guys as well going for sort of arm drags and looking for the body lock and that type of thing. That seems to be quite a popular approach to take yeah. down to jujitsu. Is that typically something that you would see a lot of in wrestling? Do you think that's very effective or, or again, would you prefer the, the underhooks and, and then the legs? I think people specialize in that in wrestling. Like there's guys who like their game is off the arm drag, but again, more or less, I, I don't think it's like as popular. Um, again, I think shooting on the legs, especially like an American style wrestling is a lot more popular than arm drags. But, uh, if you will look at like the Soviets, et cetera, like the Japanese, like they're really good at the, these arm drags and stuff. Personally for me growing up, we didn't do as many arm drags. Of course I learned a basic arm drag. I, I have like a little arm drag system, but for the most part, it's, uh, that American style hand fight hard, get in on the legs, finish the two. Um, but yeah, but in jujitsu, I think it's great, especially in the gi. I love arm drags in the gi. It's so easy. Uh, whereas in no gi, sometimes there's a lot of slippage, but in, in the gi, I think that's my favorite takedown. I don't know if I said that yet, but that would answer that question if that's in there. Yeah, no, cool. And, and then I guess thinking about competition. So you've obviously done a little bit of competi- competing now, uh, and, and you've got aspirations to, to continue competing. Mm-hmm. Um, how how do you find that the competition sort of set up in jiu-jitsu versus wrestling? And I know it's it's quite a broad question in regard to jiu-jitsu because you've got everything mm. from IBJJF right through to ADCC, which obviously looks very different. But, mm. you know, so far, how, what, how, how do you feel about, you know, jiu-jitsu competition versus what you're used to in wrestling? I think it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's, I prefer it. I think I like the way jiu-jitsu does it because you have like your master's divisions, you have your juvenile divisions, you have your younger guy divisions. I feel like jujitsu is a lot more inclusive for competitors and it can give like, it can give like younger kids goals. It can give like older guys goals. Um, whereas like with wrestling, you're pretty much fucked after college. Like it's like <laughs> either you want to compete at the Olympic trials or you're done, you know? Um, yeah. So I think that's great. Now, as far as like me personally, I think it's so awesome because it feels like I, ended my career like on top with wrestling and then immediately when i got into jujitsu i got put way down at the bottom again and i think it's fun i think it's great because there's this, there's this obvious ladder to climb and i think like in life you have to have goals and i think jujitsu has reignited like that flame for me where i'm like gosh man like i'm the shitty guy again and slowly i'm gonna climb and i'm gonna take my losses while i climb but i'm just gonna keep climbing keep climbing keep climbing and jujitsu offers that outlet for me so i i love competition with jujitsu and the way that it's structured i think ibjf is great i think adcc is great i think sub only is great i i love all of it i think it's interesting interesting that there are so many different rule sets i i just i love it so hopefully that's a good answer yeah 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 Yeah, that's cool man so tell us about your your competitions or record so far then so you mentioned i think your first comp i think you said seven and oh and and all subs off your back which is which is pretty cool and then and how have you got on since then Oh uh, yeah, so I've been competing quite a bit like the past like three years. I my first run at ADCC trials was a year ago, and I went one and one there. Uh, then I won blue belt worlds, and then got second at purple belt worlds because I got I got DQ'd in the finals of purple belt worlds. I, I did a reap, um, and then I just did ADCC trials again, and I won my first three matches. I lost in the quarters. So I was pretty proud of that. I beat a couple black belts. I was super happy. I've been working really hard to develop my jujitsu game. The first time I did trials when I went one and one, I mean, I literally had no idea what I was just, I, it was overwhelming. Um, but yeah, so the last competition was just this trials where I made it to the quarters. Uh, I got fucking go-go plotted. I didn't even know that was, <laughs> God, I'm so pissed. But, uh, other than that, it was a pretty good performance, uh, my ne- I'll, I'll compete again a couple times, January, February, March, uh, preparing for the next trials. But honestly, I guess I've only competed like probably 10 or 15 times in jiu-jitsu still. Obviously, there's probably 30, 40 matches in that, like 10 or 15. Um, I, I found it fun. I've lost like three or four matches in those. 
uh, and won a bunch too, but uh, nothing, no significant wins yet. Uh, Purple Belt Worlds was cool. I was happy to make the finals, but it's still relative. It's still fucking Purple Belt, and no one cares about that. So uh, my big goal is place the ADCC trials this year. I know everyone's like, I'm going to win, but my goal is like, Climbing the ladder, a little step. Let me get on the. I was I was one match away from being on the podium this year, so my next goal is get on the podium at trials, and then maybe if I win, that'd be cool as shit. But you know, if I don't, then the next time try to place a little higher, and then the next time maybe win, and uh, just trust in the process, have fun, and you know, be fearless and, and compete as much as possible. Those are yeah. Yeah, man, that sounds, that sounds cool. I, I saw your uh, the, the the very candid video that you did about your trials experience, and I saw yeah. the uh, the submission, the Gogo Pilata. Yeah, I wanted to ask because I wondered whether that was something that you'd even seen before at that point. I never saw it, and it's funny because when I'm in Montreal, I train at a place called Tenth Planet Montreal, and they know this guy really well. Obviously, like the Tenth Planet people are like really connected, which is hilarious. Like they're like all really connected, and. Uh, Man, I knew what an omoplata was. So I thought initially, oh, he's going to go for an omoplata. He's going to try to go to the side. I'm going to spin out. I had no idea what a go-go plata was. As soon as he <laughs> grabbed my head, I was just like, oh, fuck. I'm stuck. And it, it's weird. Everyone's like, man, like what hurt? I was like, well, my shoulder felt like it was getting ripped out. And my, like, I don't know what this is called, but it was my neck was getting smashed. My throat was getting smashed. And I was just like, ah, of course I'm tapping. It was crazy because, uh, yeah, it's every time I get submitted, I I keep that in my brain. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna work on this a, a lot. The defense to this a lot. I I went back to the ten planet people and I was like, how the fuck do you get out of this? And it's very simple. They're like, just fucking posture up and, and come. You stand up and it's very easy to shake off. And I was like, why didn't anyone tell me this before? Before I got got embarrassed in like fifty seconds. Um, that was yeah. I, I don't take losses too hard either. I'm just like, whatever, that's fucking whatever. But uh, that was funny. Did you, do you guys do go-go plotters at your gym? Or is that like a thing? It, yeah, we, we've done them. I mean, I, I've been around for a bit. So, yeah, I've done them over the years. I've never yeah. been taught a go-go platter. Yeah, it's all in good time. But, you know, I think, you know, we don't have like a 10th planet style system, which that, that, that kind of movement seems to be more associated with. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I've covered them over the years. But it's not something we do a whole lot. Um, so I think a lot of our the guys like Danny probably wouldn't have seen them yet. Yeah, I, 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 me and you, Danny, we're on the same page. I never, I didn't see them either. So <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that 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 was that was shit. But it's okay. Yeah, and then um, sort of win or lose when you when you've been competing, so your thirty plus matches that you've had. What what do you feel that your biggest biggest what two questions? So you, what what have been your biggest challenges? And your biggest or the weakest areas and also the biggest surprises that you you felt when competing? Biggest challenges. Mm. I guess it's that. Like I've I feel like because I've trained so much, I feel like I've gotten like 10 years of training in like three years. So I'm doing so much training. But the thing that training doesn't provide to you is the feel of real competition as far as like getting caught in positions you didn't understand you were weak in. And yeah. And not just the go go plotted thing, but I've been guillotined once, I've been heel hooked once. Like, it's for the most part, like when I've been submitted in a competition, it's like places that I've been in in practice, but I feel like sometimes in practice, people don't have that intensity of finishing. So I feel like you can almost get away with a lot of stuff in practice, even against people my size in practice. I feel like I'm getting away with lots of stuff. Competition has just shocked me, like, how tight certain people's systems are like how good most people are at their like one thing and like how bad i am at defending that one thing <laughs> and you know my my coach is always saying like that's why we got to compete like you just gotta i just gotta keep putting myself in those positions keep losing um which sounds bad you know it's like everyone wants to collect their gold medals I'm, i want to collect my losses so i can like you know i can build off of them um and yeah, it's, it's been shocking. Oh, also uh, a big thing is like, I've been shocked by like how many good wrestlers are in jujitsu right now. Like every time I go compete, I have at least one war. Like there's at least one guy where like, oh, he was a division one all American or, oh, he was a D2 this or a NAI that. And you're just like, fuck, 
everyone's good at I thought I was gonna come to jujitsu and everyone was gonna suck at wrestling. <laughs> no, there's so many good like former wrestlers or judokas just hiding out, waiting to have a scrap. So uh those are two big things. Uh, what was the second question? Uh, it, that, that, that was it, I think, actually. The first one was around, I guess, the, the gaps that you've identified in your game yeah. and the challenges. And the second question was about the surprises, like what surprised okay. you about jiu-jitsu okay. competition. Okay, yeah. The wrestlers. Yes, that's the that's, that's, that's <laughs> Yeah. Enough. And I, and I think, again, that's definitely something that we lack in the UK. Like when mm. you do, certainly when you do regional competitions, mm. like it's rare that you come against, uh, you know, anybody with uh, a wrestling background. Mm. Um, we tend to see, you know, more, more judo players and... Mm. You know, I don't know what you guys do in the US with regional comps, but if you've got a white belt in jiu-jitsu, but a black belt in judo, they have to compete at blue belt. Same. And I don't know if you guys, yeah. So um, when you've encountered like a judoka or a wrestler or a straight jiu-jitsu guy, so you've got a really tricky 10th planet type jiu-jitsu practitioner, you've got maybe a high level judo guy, and then you've got, you know, someone from, from your background in wrestling. Is there a particular style that you seem to struggle with or do better against? Um, I think... Going against high level judokas is very favorable for me. I wrestled, I, I had a match with a guy who's a three time Olympian in judo recently, and I just took him down three times. I, I think the judo guys who are like almost purely judo, as far as nogi takedowns go, they have a really big hole in their game. Um, and that's like the nuances of wrestling. And I found that, like, I always tell my guys, like, if the because someone was actually actually asking me this yesterday. They're like, "How do you? How did you deal with like that really good judo guy? Because he was quite a bit bigger than me. And he's, he's very athletic, and uh, I just I've wrestled so many guys who are actually good at like no gi upper body takedowns that like most of the att- attempts that judokas try to do on better wrestlers aren't very good because they're not as tight as like a good wrestler who's good at those upper body takedowns." Foot sweeps add in a different element to it, of course. Like you can, any any of us can get hit with a nice foot sweep. It just is what it is. But at actually securing a tight takedown is very hard for judokas, I find. Um, so the way I deal with them is like just in a technical sense. I know this is like annoyingly very technical. Is I always want to get inside position on their biceps because if you get inside position on a ju- uh, judoka's biceps, they they have no control ties. You don't want to get a collar tie on a judoka because it gives them the option to like start to pull you in foot sweep, but for a judoka, I'm going to get inside biceps and I'm going to look for double legs because they're, they're they, you can't uchimata from a double leg, right? If I get both your legs off the ground, there's no uchimata. If it's another wrestler guy, I try to slow it down and really make them tired. So, like, I wrestled a really good Division One guy at a trials and my game was just, like, stay on his head, constantly push him, let him shoot on me, bait him, gas him out, um, and – Either A, look for guillotines because I tend to find like a lot of wrestlers who come to jiu-jitsu still suck ass at guillotine defense or B, just like look for like counter shots and wear them out. And then I'll start to shoot towards the latter end of a match. Um, And with the funky like 10th planet-ish type guys, I faced a couple actually. Uh, It's just loose passing is usually like my idea. Like loose passing, stay away from the legs. Um... And uh, look to like really find my my sweet spot when I'm passing. Like doing this thing called like rumble passing is like the word for it now. Like just loose passing, basically lots of leg drags, lots of toriando passing, hip pins, etc. Um, but you got to approach everybody differently, of course. Uh, so a big thing is just watching the watching film before I compete with someone. I know lots of people hate doing that, but uh, the generalizations I said are just because I face certain people who have those certain styles. But I still try to watch film. Um, because lots of people are different at lots of the things and uh yeah it's uh i don't watching film i have a good coach too so we we try to game plan for every single match and uh for the most part it helps sometimes like i said i, I still get caught though so you know but <laughs> yeah. you know, sorry to be like overly technical no <laughs> mate it's great mate no, that's it's exactly what people want to hear to be honest with you yeah, yeah there's uh, the majority of our audience may are, are, are grapplers of some sort. We've just got some that aren't, but no, it's great. So uh, yeah, don't don't shy away from uh, a bit of technical explanation, mate. It's yeah. good. It's appreciated. Yeah. Um, and then thinking about your own A game. So if you're looking for the finish, you know, a quick finish. What what's what you'll go to in regard to, I guess, your typical sort of pass. So you get the takedown, and then where do you go from there to get the finish? Probably. I would say most likely it would be either like my heel hooks have probably been my most like my my the the most submissions I have have been heel hooks and arm bars. So 
probably one of those two. But if I'm on top, yeah, it's mo- for sure most likely going to be an arm bar. Like I'm going to pass you, take your back, and then do an arm trap, and then do an arm bar. I really like rear naked chokes, but against the fat boys, it's really hard to get under their neck. You know, like <laughs> they, dude, they don't have a chin. That's why. Yeah. yeah, some of these guys they're built like like this, so like you, it's I'm not Gordon Ryan, right? So it's like it's really hard to. Uh, I find like the hand fighting for rear naked chokes is super tough against guys who are more experienced than me, which is basically everybody. So uh, I found like heel hooks and arm bars to be like my, and these, this isn't a secret. Like I'm not giving anything away. It's like these, these have just sh- shown to be like my two highest percentage uh, finishes. If I'm on bottom heel hooks, if I'm on top arm bars. So, yeah. And then looking at sort of looking around the, the jujitsu world and, you know, you mentioned you trained with Gordon and, and some of the other guys for, for a week. You know, you haven't probably competed against many high level guys yet, but you might train with a couple. Like for you looking around, like who's, you know, who, who's the, you know, who's the, I guess the, the role model or the idol for you at the moment in regard to jujitsu? I don't, I wouldn't say I have an idol. I, I really enjoy watching lots of guys. Um, a guy that I really like watching is Giancarlo Bodoni. He's, he's, he's a great one. Uh, he's a very nice guy in person too. So I think, I really like the new wave style in general. I like the way they wrestle. It's very jujitsu specific. I like the way that they push the pace and they, they constantly submit people. So I think you could name any of the new wave guys, Big Dan, uh, John Carlo, Luke Griffith, Gordon, uh, any of those guys. I, I know lots of people don't like them, but like, I don't really care about like the politics of either. I've trained with B team. I really like those guys too. I've trained with New Wave. I really like those guys. But as far as like stylistically, like when I'm watching people, name any of the New Wave people, and that's those are the guys that like I'm watching for like technical uh, advice or technical you know notes for sure. Yeah. And how about like a dream matchup? You know, if you could pick, I don't know, three people to compete against. I think Owen Lively. That's one. That's a big one. I like the guy. He's super cool. I think we could have a good scrap. I think it would be a fun style matchup. Um, I think Nicky Rod is an obvious one. Like that, that would be a great match too. Uh, I think he has a really good style. I think I have a very good style match for him too. And then, uh, there's a guy named like Elder Cruz. That's another guy. He just won black belt worlds, uh, at, I guess like minus 99 kilograms. All three of those guys are guys who are going to like stand up and wrestle. Well, Nicky Rod pulls guard and wrestles up, but those, those guys are like guys that I think, I have a, a winnable match against as far as like, I don't think any of the three are like the highest percentage submission artists, but they're fun, scrappy wrestling matches. Like, you know, I can make them, I can play in my world a bit with those three guys. Whereas like some people want to hear like Gordon or something. No, Gordon would fuck me up. Right. So it's like, I want a guy who's not the best at submissions, but is going to do a scrappy, like wrestling type match. Um, <laughs> Win or lose, I, I don't know if I'd be any of those guys, but like I'm, I also think I have a, a very good style for any of those three guys, and those are like big matches that would come with some big wins. So uh, hopefully in the future I could get a match with any of those guys. Like I, said, I think Owen would be the fun one. It would be the, the funnest one. I just love that guy's style. I love watching him, and uh, I wouldn't pull guard, and we'd I think we'd both take each other down a couple times. So I think that's that has to be my number one for sure. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let him know, mate, see if he can set it up for you. Let him know. That'd be a fun, that'd be a fun <laughs> one to watch, for sure. Yeah, get, get yeah. Grapple Fest. Get Grapple Fest on. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll just get yeah. all the guests. I'll say this to Paul. We, uh, after, after a year or two, we should get all the guests together somewhere and just yeah. let them all scrap it out. <laughs> I'm down. That, that, that would you know be awesome. I mean? We've had some class guests on, so like we could we could do that after a couple of years. Just I'm, arrange I might a camp not do for so a week. Well. Yeah, I was like, I might not do so well, but I'll. You may I'm not, mate. I'm a white belt. Fucking hell, I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm old, and I'm old, mate. Don't forget. So I'd, uh, I'd probably just turn into dust. Yeah, 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 yeah. but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely Owen. That's, I think that's the number one match. I think people would love to see that match too. I think, again, it would be a match where neither one of us are going to hold back, and we're going to like. It'd probably be fireworks. Like I said, I'd probably get foot swept a couple times. He'd probably get double legged a couple times. Neither one of us would probably submit each other. And so I think it's uh, eventually one of those like matches to make. I got to get a bigger name and I got to compete more. But uh, I think eventually that match is going to happen for sure. And I'm sure he he's a scrapper. So hopefully. Yeah, he, oh, he doesn't give a fuck. Does yeah, he? he'd be game, mate. He'd yeah, definitely he'd be just, game. He just don't give a fuck, mate. Yeah. Like, yeah, fine. 
Yeah, yeah. man, that's cool. And then in regards to your aspirations, mate, do you is it is it just professional grappling now for you, or do you have aspirations to move into MMA and and go down that route at all? Yeah, I'm I'm still somewhere like in the middle with that. So I think I'm gonna give ADCC trials a couple more runs, and then I, we'll see. Like maybe I'll test out MMA a little bit, um, but. Man, really, like, the biggest thing for me is, like, I love to go out. I love to scrap. I just want to have really tough, fun matches, and uh, I love working on my business. So, like, I always tell people, like, even in college, I was like this. Like, I'm more than a wrestler. Like, that's, like, my whole motto. So, I'm more than jujitsu too. So, it's, like, for me, it's, like, I love my business. I love teaching. I love doing instructionals. I love email writing, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, that's that's where I want to be. I want to be a world champion at those things. Um the other stuff is just fun. Like I said, it'd be cool to place at trials. It'd be cool to go to ACC once. Uh, but my biggest aspirations are to be the best coach as I can be um, for the people that I help coach online and uh, to just continue to grow my business and help people out. Uh, and then just have the coolest matches, like have have the Owen Lively match, have the Nicky Rod match, have like those matches that like 10 years from now when I'm done competing, I can be like, fuck, dude, I did the scraps. You know what I mean? So the medals are cool, but like they, you know, I, I have a fucking thousand medals, you know, it's a uh, cool matches are the things that I want. As far as like specifically in jujitsu, it's the cool matches. Yeah, man, living the dream. Now, tell us a little bit more about your business and some of the coaching and the instructions and stuff you do, mate. Uh, yeah. So I started my business a couple of years ago. Um, I basically just do it. I, I make wrestling instructionals, like wrestling for jujitsu instructionals. Uh, I think I have like seven or eight out now. The most recent one was the one we talked about was like the takedowns for older grapplers. Um, man, uh, basically what I try to, I, I just think about, uh, what do people need in jujitsu? Not much for like the actual wrestling side of it. Cause the, there's no consumer market in wrestling. There's a huge consumer market in jujitsu. Uh, so I try to focus my base around, uh, what do people need? So I have a takedown for older grapplers. I have solo drills. And then, um, my best selling one that's just goes crazy for some reason is the dominate the hand fight. I try to drop an instructional like once every like three to four months. Uh, but now because I have so many, I can kind of pull it, like I can kind of string it out a little bit longer. Uh, but that's that's my full time job. And I write emails daily and just try to connect with the people that I, I'm around. And yeah, that that's pretty much it. I don't I don't know much else to say about it. It's uh, sounds like a fucking nice life. <laughs> dude, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it sounds like it's, great. It's, it's the life like i'm blessed i'm i'm so grateful that uh the people in jiu-jitsu are so amazing and that they're so willing to learn it's something about jiu-jitsu that i love so much more than wrestling is i find that jiu-jitsu people are a lot more willing to learn even just to learn uh like there's a lot more learning just to learn and like that's it like they're like i'm just learning this because i want to learn this like this this older guy he was like 60 years old a tall black dude at adcc trials he came up to me he's like brandon i was like hi do i know you he was like no but I know you. He was like, I'm 60 years old. I had like an ACL surgery and I got your instructional and I've been doing it. This I've been working on these wrestling moves for like weeks, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. He's like just there to watch his son compete. He, he wasn't competing. He's just some old dude who I think he's like a black belt at some gym in like Georgia or something. And he was like, I just love, he just wanted to learn. He got my instructional just because he wanted to learn. He was just like, I just want to learn. I don't want to compete. I don't do anything. And it's, uh, I'm so grateful for my job because there's I'm so grateful for jujitsu. I'm so grateful for my job. I'm so grateful for all my interactions with people because there's just so many people in this community who just want to learn and, and they don't give a fuck about competing. They don't care if you're an ADCC champion. They don't care if you won this or that. They're like, I like you. You're a cool guy. I want to learn from you. And uh, I've been able to suck at jujitsu pretty bad right now and still have like a pretty profitable business because of these people. You're saying you suck at jujitsu. Yeah. I've watched some of your videos, mate. You do not fucking suck at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you maul Chewy a few times. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, it's it's all relative, of course. And uh, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, that that that's the business that I just wanted to make sure to tell people. Like, I'm super grateful. I, I always felt like a like a little slimy when I started to sell instructionals. Like, oh, I'm just like a grease ball. But then, uh, yeah, my my uh, mentor Chewy was like, bro you're helping people like you don't have to feel weird because you're selling something and it's like selling is not selling something is not a bad thing especially if you're, you're truly trying to help someone you also got to help yourself too and so I've, more than anything yeah like that's my big goal is to keep having a business keep growing my business keep keep growing students and like the 
the best interactions that I ever have aren't like the ones when I like win a medal at a tournament. It's like when someone comes up to me and they're like, man, I watch your instructionals or I'm on your email list and I or I follow you on Instagram and I really love the stuff that you're doing. And uh, that, that stuff means the world to me. And like, that's like the fulfilling stuff to me. So uh, corny answer, but yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. And, and where do you, where do you sell the instructions to? Have you got a website? Yeah. Just Brandon Reed, three X.com. That's like three and the lowercase X.com. I, I might change the website name eventually, but for now I'll, I'll keep it just the same as my Instagram. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not great with that type of marketing, like the, the, the labeling, but uh, I'm learning, still growing too. Yeah, that's cool. And, and how has it been training with Chewy? Because I've been watching his mm. content for years in fairness, and he seems like a super cool guy. Um, how have you found that experience? I love it, man. He's, he's my mentor. He's one of my best friends. He's like an uncle to me. Um, I mean... I think I got really lucky because I've changed a lot training with him. Uh, obviously, my jiu has grown a lot. Our styles are very similar, clearly. Like, my bottom game is very similar to his bottom game. My top game is very similar to his. Obviously, there's a couple differences uh, just because, like, uh, you know, just is what it is. Um, but it's been great. Like, when I go compete, he's a great coach, uh, not only with technical advice, but helping keep me grounded, you know, helping me kill the nerves, helping me just talk and be funny and just have a friend to talk to. Um, and also like more than anything, he's been my business mentor. He's the reason I started doing instructionals. He's the run, the one who guided me to do the email list. He's the guy that like, uh, from jujitsu to work, he's, he's been an amazing, uh, mentor. I, funny enough, I was actually just on his podcast, like two days ago before this podcast. I was like, fuck, I got two podcasts in one week. People are going to think I'm a piece of shit. They're like, Brandon, I'm so <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh it's it's been great uh he's just a he's a great guy i mean uh, for anyone who wants to do content or anything like he's a great guy to like watch like be like oh like this is like th- this guy understands the niche of jujitsu uh he's great at, he, just like you guys i mean you guys have been i think this is probably like the 10th podcast i've ever been on and it's like this one's been fun uh it's it, you know it's that uh was it uk uh there's a there's a vibe with the the, the <laughs> You guys, sarcastic as fuck, mate, is what it's called. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a there's definitely a vibe. I, I like it. It's a that this this has been a great podcast. Chewy's podcast is great for like people who have never listened to him. It's it's great because he's the one who taught me about like niches beneath. Because when I first came into jujitsu, I was like athlete, 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 and like his whole niche is not about athletes. It's about it's about the white belt who just started jujitsu has a knee injury, or it's about the woman who's in a jujitsu class with 90% men. It's like, he really feeds to like the 99% of people. Whereas like lots of guys like a Gordon or a Nicky rod, like they only really feed to like the 1% uh, like the, the, the athletes. So now I went through all the chewy stuff. Yes. Like when I first started about a year ago, eight months ago, honestly, I, I, I found him through the algorithm, whatever, putting jujitsu chewy comes up. Yeah. And then I just went back through and just watched fucking so much of his stuff, like all mm-hmm. his white belt beginner stuff, how not to be a fucking spaz on the mat, what to yeah. do, what not to do. Because you do, uh, coming into jiu-jitsu, you feel like, uh, and me being bigger as well. Like when I first mm-hmm. started jiu-jitsu, I was, I was like 115 kilos. And, uh, you know, I was bigger and I was always worried about like fucking hurting someone just through, through being a mong, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then like, I used to watch loads of his videos, just his fucking basic, you know, don't be a dickhead here. Don't do this. Don't do that. And it, it, it actually fucking helped me loads because you do lot. realize, yeah, it helps loads because no one, no one really says that to your face, do they? Do you know what I mean? No one's in the gym yeah. is going to come up to you and go, you're being a fucking retard today. Like stop. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it. It's hilarious. That That's exactly it. Is I, I always thought, I remember I told Chewy, I thought it was cringy. I used to be like, when I first met him, I was like, oh, these your YouTube videos are cringy. Like, but then it's like now. <laughs> Now I'm the one who I edit his YouTube videos. I'm the one who posts his YouTube videos. Like I do all of his I do all of his back end social media yeah. stuff now Class. um on the side for work. And it's like it's crazy. Like I love his stuff because uh, his stuff working for him and doing his stuff has helped me become better, like in my own way, because it's like you said, there's like uh un I don't know, like non discussable topics, like when you're yeah. actually training. That, like, you don't want to be a dick and be like, bro, you're being a spaz. What the fuck? But, like, for Chewy, you can click in YouTube how to not be a spaz in, like, in jujitsu. Which I did do. <laughs> boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you get to listen to it. Or, hey, how to lose weight for jujitsu. What are the best? I have bad knees. What are What's a great way to do jujitsu with bad? Like, 
Gordon Ryan's not answering those questions. You know, like Chewy is. Uh, I think he's very real, Chewy, and I think there's a real yeah. appreciation from people who are real. Like yeah. you look at, um, I, I watched a video earlier and uh, Sam Sulak, you know, that young mm-hmm. bodybuilder dude. Yeah. He's gone massively viral in like the last year. He's got something like, I don't know, a million subscribers on YouTube. Mm. But his his videos are like shit quality, doesn't mm. like edit them, doesn't do anything. He just him going to the gym, talking shit, whatever. Mm. But the, the, the reason they're so popular is because they're so real. And I feel like that's with Chewy. The first thing that comes to my mind was why do I like Chewy's content? And and that's mm. why. It's because he seems like a genuine real person who actually cares about his students rather than like about being about himself. It's like he is definitely about his students, which is a fucking is is refreshing, you know. He is. He's very uh man, he I'm so grateful for him. He he's very real. It's like the person you see in the videos is the person that he is like in real life. It's a problem sometimes because you, you ask this motherfucker one question and then he will talk for 30 minutes and he'd be like, Fuck, dude, I got to go out and get dinner, bro. It's fucking eight o'clock at night. Can, we, can I leave shit? But it, he's very helpful. He's a very uh, empathetic, empathetic, maybe that's the word, person. And he he's uh, he's just a great guy. And I think that's why our gym has so many members. Like I think we have like 400 plus members. And we always have visitors like every day. There's like some random person who's driving through because of work. And they're like, I'm going to go to meet Chewy. I'm going to go see Chewy. I want to take a picture with Chewy. And it's like, he's not this superstar. He's not the greatest jujitsu athlete in the world, but he's, uh, he's like you said, he's real. And, uh, that's like why I said, like, I'm more than the competition and stuff because he taught me that you don't have to be an ADCC champion to have a successful business and to have, and to help people. You can be this, this guy who's tough. But like no one really gives a fuck about your results. They they just care that you care about them, and uh, so like that's the model that I try to follow. And uh, I think Chewy's been a great uh, a great inspiration for that part of my life. That's really cool, man. I, I wanted to ask actually, and you've just touched on a few points there already, but we've talked a lot about I guess the physicality of of grappling and the technical components. But I wanted to ask from a psychological perspective. Like what, where you see like the biggest difference between jujitsu and wrestling, and what, what the maybe the biggest thing you've learned in the last three years from jujitsu is for competition. I think it's like pre match rituals, which again, it's very specific, but I think I've, I find that very few jujitsu athletes have pre match rituals. Um, so what that means is like in wrestling, you're almost always taught, depending on your coach, but for the most part, the culture is very normal. Like, hey, like 20 to 30 minutes before your match, you're going to stand up, you're going to start warming up, you're going to get, you're going to, you need to get like a glaze of sweat on your skin. You need to have your self-talk ready. You need to have your, like your meditation. Like for me, I warm up for about 30 minutes before a match. I do my, like my 10 deep breaths before a match and I have my mantra right before I step on. So it's like, I learned how to get loose and get into the zone before every match. And I think sometimes I've beat guys who are better than me in jujitsu because they come in cold and they don't really like they don't there's no zone like they're just like oh fuck it i'm just gonna try to fucking smack this guy <laughs> that's me mate <laughs> yeah, yeah as yeah. you said i loved danny because he did that in his first comp <laughs> yeah literally but so, I was fucking but it's, it's chilled okay. out i was like just wandered onto the mat didn't really warm up and it was like a fucking whirlwind mate <laughs> yeah I, I will say it's hard to war- it's it takes time. And like when I say that with the pre-match ritual, I, I don't want anyone to be like, okay, I got to go do a 40 minute warm up Cause it's like, you also want to like build one that's good for you. Like for some people, it's five minutes for some people, it's 10 for me. I, I need like 20 to 30 minutes to really get loose. Cause I, I have a wrestling style. Right. So like I'm exploding a lot. So I really, but it's like, um, I think the best guys have like some type of pre-match ritual, whether it's like physical or like mental where they're like really getting into the zone Whereas like lots of jujitsu guys are not. And another thing is like uh, on the mental part is lots of jujitsu people are scared to compete. Like, whereas like in wrestling, it's like, fuck bro. Like we all, we're competing every weekend. Like no one gives a fuck if you have a loss, like you can still win a national title with 10 losses on your record. Right. Like that's just the normal. It happens all the time. Like you, you have, let's say you have 40 matches in one season and then, Let's say you're 30 and 10 going into the finals of nationals. You could still win. And no one gives a fuck that you lost 10 matches before that. But like lots of jujitsu people, I find like really want to hold on to that. Like they went and won IBJJF Worlds at Blue Belt. And now they're like putting world champ in their bio. And they're like, I I can't, I got to hold, like I compete like once ever, like, and then I'm done. But it's like, uh, I think there's like this mental thing, like with wrestling, it's like we expect to lose, but like, the more you compete, the higher chances are that you're eventually going to win. 
So, cause I, and I say this cause I personally have a lot of friends at my own gym and they know this that will look at me and be like, I'm scared to lose. Like, I really just don't want to compete cause I'm scared to lose. And I just get so much anxiety. Like that's what they said. I get so much anxiety and I'm like, bro, like who cares if you lose? Like this shit's gay anyways. Right. So it's like, <laughs> just, just, just go do it, bro. Like just go, who cares, bro? Like if you win, like girls aren't going to be chasing you. Money's not flying into your pockets. Like, bro, just go compete. Like. So it's, it's like that mental shift uh, that I find like most wrestlers don't give a fuck. Um, whereas like some do obviously, but like most average jujitsu hobbyist um, who the guys who train like four to five times a week. So I would call them like semi pro hobbyists. They're, they're, that, they're that weird person who's always in practice, but they never compete. Those guys, in my opinion, need to like, you know, get their head out of their ass and like go compete. And uh, cause you're, you're going to grow so much. Um, and then eventually you'll become like numb to the losing and numb to the winning. And it will just become this, like competing will just become this process. It won't be like the, the gold medals or the, the losses. So that's a, that's a really big thing. Yeah. Do you think the, the, the belts and the, the grades and the ranks have a, have a part to play in that, that people obviously in wrestling, there isn't, as far as I'm aware, any sort of grading or rank you, you're in it. The only way to, I guess, get any affirmation is to mm-hmm. just compete. Um, whereas in jiu-jitsu, you can obviously become a black belt and, pretend, I mean, certainly in some schools, never compete. Do you think that has something to do with it? Mm, I think so. I think I like the belt system in its own way. I think it, there's this, like, beautiful thing that, like, when – I mean, you guys have all seen it, right? Like, there's, like, that beautiful moment that someone who's worked really hard or maybe they're an older person or, like, something, blah, 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 and then they get their black belt and you're like, man, that's a really beautiful moment. So, like, I do love those moments that jiu-jitsu have, uh, but it is – it's very nuanced, but it is sad that some people will go their whole career and never compete. Like we have a black belt at my gym, Matt. This guy compete. He's forty. I think he's forty five years old. He competes every weekend. He just fucking goes to your local Fuji and competes with like twenty year olds, and uh, he wins sometimes. He loses sometimes. But like this man is just like he's just about the process. And it's like uh, I'm not saying everyone should compete because I mean who who the fuck am I? But like. I think everyone would benefit off of competing. And I think coaches would benefit off of encouraging competition. Like, Hey man, at least compete two times per belt. That's not even a lot to ask. Like who cares if you win, who cares if you lose, just, just go test yourself. And then again, we talked about the self-defense thing. It's like jujitsu matches aren't real self-defense situations, but you get that practice of like, this guy wants to beat me. I want to beat him. We're not friends most of the time. Um, and I can practice being in a, a, a live stressful situation in an uncontrolled environment, uh, as uncontrolled as it is, you know? So I, I think belts can hurt. I think some people will hide from competition because they don't want to make themselves look bad. Whereas realistically losing in competition doesn't make you look bad. I think it only, it's only a good thing. Like you, you, you're like, oh man, if someone, if some turd on the internet's talking shit because you lost a jujitsu match, like. They're probably they probably got like two followers and they're a spam account, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I think there's so much benefit to competing, and I think that if you every time you get your belt, you should at least compete once. And again, I know long winded answer, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think the belt system can definitely hurt people it, because of that. Like they want to save themselves, but uh, there's there's nothing to save. Yeah, you know? no, that's cool, man. Brandon, it's been an awesome chat, mate. Really enjoyed yeah. that. It's been uh, it's been insightful. It's been uh, technical in bits, but I think that was good. Um, yeah. so we'll definitely encourage people to check out your instructionals we'll pop your website and everything in our description is there anything else you want to kind of shout out anybody you want to say thanks to anything else you want to plug real quick um, no thanks Chewy he's one of my sponsors thanks Level Black is one of my sponsors um, but other than that no that's it thank you guys for having me yeah pleasure man thanks for coming Cheers, on buddy. Appreciate thank it. you very much mate <laughs>